Hey, everyone. We're live at the Pace Studios. We're live right now with John the Martyr. Guys, thank you all for being here. This is uh, going to be a treat. We're looking forward to sharing what you guys have to, to play with the rest of the internet right now. Yeah. Yeah. I had the pleasure of seeing you guys over the holidays at, at Brooklyn Bowl and the live show just uh, blew me away completely. And uh, I'm stoked that we had the chance to be in the giant studio today and do the uh, the full representation of this band and color coordinated and everything. The, the, um, this is beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> um, can you tell us a little bit about about the first song you guys are going to do today? Uh, Sequential Water, I think it would be Cross the Line. That'll be our, uh, I think that's our, our second, our second release, our second single release, uh, followed by uh, Feeling Good. And then we're going to finish up with uh, our third, hopefully, release uh, sometime this year. It'll be Time. All right. So Cross the Line first? Cross the Line first. All right, right. Love to hear it. All right. <laughs> Time you cross the line, you never call home. Down, I no reply. You left me all alone. How long it take to contemplate the thoughts inside of me? As long as you got thoughts, my thoughts and your thoughts set me free. Now it's the facility where I don't belong. But I've got my keys, my strings, my skins. I've got my favorite song. Time to time to time to erase all your fears They make the bands, they clap our hands They never slow down They move from side to side through space and time From town to town I'm all locked up, it's all corrupt Perhaps I'm all wrong But I've got my keys, my strings, my skin I've got my favorite song like that okay all right that sounded great thank you um can you uh can you tell us a little bit about how this band came to be this is and it's either either a question for bill or for uh for kyle for anybody up there um if anybody you don't know out on the internet there is john the martyr is not standing up here john is not here well, kyle and bill and everybody I'll else start it off and then we can have one of some of the other members uh you know get involved with it 
the origin of John the Martyr, the name, we'll start with the, uh, how things kind of, kind of configured together in terms of membership. I was uh, involved with a acapella group uh, under the auspices of uh, Muni, Music Under New York. And we had a location um, in the subways. And uh, unknowingly to me, uh, Mr. Kyle Ridley said he came upon amongst the crowd and uh, he liked what he heard. He was just uh, coming from, he's originally from New Orleans and uh, via uh, California. He came to New York, had some projects that he had in mind, thought that Spank, the acapella group, would be a good fit for some of the material that he had. Kyle, you want to take us from there? Yeah, so I, I called him up, oh, got in touch with uh, Herm, the band leader, called him up, and uh, at the time I was renting gear with my friend Dionis at Guitar Center and trying to turn the lessons area into a studio uh, without them really knowing. And so <laughs> we brought, uh, I mean, Spank came and we recorded some songs and then Bill, one of the guys, I think it was Herm, told you to take lead on on the verse to the next song we're about to play, Feeling Good. And then when I heard him sing lead, we just kept working together after that. And then Dustin and I used to jam in New Orleans. We both grew up in New Orleans. He moved up here and then I think we met Martin and then the rest of the rest of the gang. Cool. Yeah, not to not to trivialize the rest of the gang. Uh, one of the <laughs> one of the uh, I think one of the some of the appeal that John Namada has is that it's a multicultural type of band. When people ask, well, what kind of what genre of music is it? I just usually describe it as an eclectic uh, gumbo of uh, a lot of fusions. We have, if I may, uh, Mr. Martin Seiler. He's from Germany right. on saxophone. <laughs> Mr. Dylan Garrett, he's from Texas on trombone. Mr. Chris Luca on trumpet. Chris is from Philly, right here, by way of Philly. Mr. Gabe Valley on right. bass, violin, everything. It's everything, man. And of course, we have, um, oh, Miss oh, Kiyo Yataka. Got it right. She's from Japan, just got back from Japan visiting her relatives and friends. Uh, we have Miss Michio Vesio. Misha Vesio. She, Misha. She's from, she's all over, from all over. <laughs> she's from everywhere, everything, girl. We have Chloe, uh, just recently became a part of John Namata, a lead and background vocalist. Double D, Darren Denman, he's from Vegas. You can see he lost Arthur Will. And we have Mr. Double D, another one. Mr. Dustin DeSalvo on drums, uh, one of the original founding members of John Amato from New Orleans. And uh, the other founding father would be father. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. The other founding member is Kyle Ridley, uh, one of the original founding members is, along with uh, Dustin. And uh, he's a songwriter, and all the songs that have been composed here this evening uh, that you'll be hearing have been uh, written by none other than Mr. Kyle Ridley. All and that right. is the complete configuration of, well, this, this melting pot array of talent is what I guess people find an appealing thing because when you put all those things together, what kind of sound are you going to get back? And I'm from, my name is Bill Hudson, I forgot me. <laughs> I'm not thinking about me. I'm from Harlem, born and raised, you know, uh, James Brown, Apollo fan for years. So supplementing that are uh, my roots, everybody's cultural roots and what they bring to the table. We have a product that hopefully will be released uh, this, this year in April. The release date is April 13th, I believe. So uh, for those of us who have heard us already, I'll just sit back and enjoy. For those who haven't heard, heard of us, we hope you uh, yell like hell when you hear us. All right. All right. Well, thank you for previewing these songs and uh, and doing it in this building here. It seems like an appropriate spot for it, considering your rehearsal spots right around the corner. The video for Cross the Line, the song you guys just played, includes this. This building is in the background of that video for for all the uh, for all the horn sections. So uh, this all seems very full circle and a perfect spot to do this. So uh, thanks for coming and doing it. And yeah, yeah. Uh, what's what's coming up second? What's the second song you guys are gonna do?
every day She makes me feel so good in her own very special way I said, baby, come and take me home You know it's been a hard-earned day Cause I need I'm a simple man, what can I say? Come on now Every day feeling good, yeah 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 Whenever and far apart sometimes, little girl The world seems so meaningless But when we're wrapped up in each other's arms We bring out the very best Feeling good, feeling now, good Just what you mean to me The all of the whole wide world Could turn page by page and see Come on now Every, 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 every day Your love got me totally crazy My, my Every, 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 every day Your love got me feeling so good That sounds great. Thank you, guys. Yeah, I'm glad you joined us, brother. Uh, we got one fan out there. <laughs> <laughs> in the room and a bunch out on the internet. The internet's stoked right. right now. Everyone watching right now is having we a good time out there. There are, are real people on the other side of these screens, oh, really? and, they're, yeah, and they're stoked. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of them is my mom, actually. Hi. All right. What's her name? <laughs> her name? Yeah. Uli. Hey, Uli. Hi, Uli. Nice. Thanks for watching. Um, can you tell us a little about, you said, so you're from, you're from Harlem, grew up uh, around, around the Apollo. Can you talk a little bit about some of the shared influences and some of the artists that you and, you and Kyle and, and anyone else in the band came together and sort of uh, bonded over some of those, those uh, artists that you all love? Okay. Well, we got some, well, we're not shy from uh, performing in front of audiences, but in terms of getting behind the mic, I don't know. But anyway, my mother used to call the Apollo my second home. Because, uh, you know, we was kids from 13, 14 years old. Back then, the Apollo only cost about $2.50. We didn't have no $2.50. So what we did, there was always somebody trying to make an extra buck or usher something. So we knock on the back door of the Apollo. You know, we can get it for a dollar. The now thing is to run upstairs before the, the uh, ushers look to see who just snuck in. And let me sit there and just pretend we was there looking at the old show. Uh, one of my favorite uh, influences was uh, James Brown uh, because I liked his dance step and the way he commanded the band. Uh, the Motown Review Show with them, you get a you get a lot of money, a lot of a lot of uh, a big show for the influences for the buck. You had Marvin Gaye, you had the Supremes, you had the Temptations, all in one show. So uh, yeah, so Marvin Gaye, James Brown. Uh, just anybody who came through the doors of the Apollo, uh, they had a big influence on me, myself. Yep. 
Same here. <laughs> Except I wasn't there, but nice. just my dad, that's all he played in the car. Temptations, Drifters, Dramatics, all those. Anybody else want to share? Yeah, that, um, yes, actually, that, that's the one of the most amazing things about being in this band is that um, we have Bill and Bill has seen all, like <clears throat> all of us would say the same things, like of course, Temptations, fantastic. And then whenever we have some downtime, like between soundcheck or a show or we're on tour, um, and we all talk about music. It's like, yeah, have you heard this record? Bill's like, yeah, I've seen them live like 17 times. And then we all just listen, like mouth agape to what these heroes of ours have done. And it's, that's one of the, what the gumbo part that Bill was talking about. Like, it's so amazing for all of us to come together and just share whatever we have musically and whatever we have personally. And just, I get more out of this band than out of any formation I've ever, ex excluding my family. But uh, other than that, <laughs> mom, other than that, I, I get so much out of these people and this music. It's just beautiful. What do I have to say about anything, man? I'm just having, a, I'm having a great time. I'm in this with Martin, man. Like I, I'm, I consider myself fortunate. Like we, I, I got, I got roped into this. Someone asked for a trumpet player, but I guess like influence wise, like, you know, listening to horn bands growing up, my, my parents were, well, my dad was heavy into fusion. So you know, I was screwed from Jump Street, but you know, grew up listening to like, you know, Coltrane, Weather Report, uh, Return to Forever, that kind of stuff. And uh, like a depth, like beyond that, like a depth of just like horn bands, like different kind of, you know, horn front of quintets, sextet, stuff like that. So, you know, playing with playing with these two guys up here in the horn section, like we we just have fun with it. Like we have a blast. We have a great time with it. Like you get to breathe through these tunes with other musicians that are just laying this foundation that like we just get to have a blast, you know. And if you can't tell, like if we're if we're not having fun, it's hard for you guys to have fun. So if we're having a blast, you gotta come with us. Who else you got? Anybody, else? Anybody else wanna share their thoughts? What about you, Double D? You good, yeah. You ain't good. <laughs> Well, no, uh, uh, in particular, I'm sorry. I was going to say, can you tell? No, you you first. In particular, uh, in particular, uh, when I you know kind of pointed over at Chris, Chris is from Philly, and that was another, that was another, uh, that was a, a nest egg, a, a melting pot of. You had Motown in Detroit, then you had uh, Philly sound uh, out of the that hole with Hall and Oates, the Intruders. Uh, Blue Magic. Uh, he was in here not Teddy that long ago. John, John Oates came through and played, played huh? one of these sessions in this room not really? too long ago. Yeah. Ah, I hear you. And, you know, being that we're talking about uh, influences, Kyle and, and, and Dustin, they're from New Orleans because you can imagine some of the sounds they've heard. Uh, didn't we saw Dr. Hook, Dr. J Dr. John, didn't we? Dr. John was at when we was at the, in the first, uh, when we went down to New Orleans. You guys you played Tipitinas, him? right? Dr. John. But you. My biggest influence from New Orleans is probably Alan Toussaint. Alan Toussaint? Uh, and yours, brother? I'd say the Meters and the Neville Brothers. Probably. So you had something to say, brother. <laughs> All right. <laughs> But if you guys want somebody. to afterwards, there's a huge tape archive up there. There's the last show that the John Coltrane Quintet ever played uh, from Newport Jazz 1966 is on a tape upstairs. There's a ton of uh, meters and a ton of, of Neville Brothers because Bill Graham used to manage those guys. And we've got the Bill Graham archive sitting seven floors above us. So if you guys have time and want to check it out offline, we should go look at those tapes. Um, well, cool. Appreciate Can you tell that. us what's coming up third with the, the last song you guys are going to do is? Our last selection would be that of time, um, a little bit of that time. Time uh, to me, and, and initially, like I said, in the, uh, the origin of the group, uh, the songwriter being Kyle Ridley, um, I used to always try to get a feel, a sense of what the song, what he had in mind for the song to mean. So I would sit back and read, sit back, say, Kyle, well, when you were writing this song, what did you have on your mind? And you know, away from him, I'd come up with, you know, my uh, concept of the song. But then when we get together, we pull it together. Time, uh, something inevitably that uh, we don't have enough of. And time, with the passing of time, uh, there comes age. And, of course, you know, six feet under. So time is something that you can't bargain with. Time waits for no one. All those cliches stem from 
uh, the essence or the passing of time. An hourglass, however, we, however you want to pass time, it's, it's going to happen. You can't stop it. So that's kind of the concept. If you listen to the lyrics of time, that's kind of the message of it, partial message. Did I get that right, brother? Perfect. Yeah. This is a one-word answer guy. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> no, we're getting ready. Man, y'all ready? Yeah. Let's hit it. Come on.
Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you, Bill. you so much, Pace. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Listen, Kyle. Listen, I have thank one other thing to say, yeah. if I may. Yeah, please. I want to put in the plug for those who haven't seen us thus far. John the Martyr, we are headlining at the Loft at the City Winery on March 9th, 9 o'clock. So if you're not there, then you must be a square. And plug the, the forthcoming album, too, which is the details still are coming together, right? But johnthemartyr.com is where all the details will be once the album uh, exists and is out in the world. You guys are targeting April, you said? April 13th. All right. So we'll stay tuned. And uh, guys, thank you again. We for appreciate you. Thank you songs. so much. Right.